Welcome back. It's the new look Manson Brothers show. Uh, I have to apologize in advance, folks. I've been temporarily detained in Los Angeles, California, unable to be with my brother. But of course, uh, he's holding it down back at the uh, missile silo. Um, Hey, we got a good one this week. I'm kind of excited. If I said you could watch a kick-ass movie about aliens, right, with a great soundtrack and some really great actors, would you watch that thing? Hell yes, I'd say you were nuts. There you go. We're going to talk about 2006's James Gunn's Not Guardian of the Galaxy. We're talking about Slither, and we'll be right back. And we're back. Hey, it's the Zoom version of the Manson Brothers show this week. Uh, Once again, apologies. Uh, I am stuck in California. Depends on how you want to say if it's stuck or not. Um, But my bro's got some new headwear. And we're going to talk about a great film this week, 2006's Slither. What's going on there? Did you cut yourself shaving or something? No. I just decided to go with a, a black banana instead of a hat. Gotcha. Well, it looks good. You make it look real. That's for sure. So let's talk about Slither. This is a great one. Take yeah, I like Slither. You know, Slither is one of those movies I, I kind of went into without any expectation because I just – saw it because I didn't have anything better to do. So it wasn't like, oh, I see Slither. I just like, oh, what's this thing? And I went and saw it. And man, was I not only pleasantly surprised, I was awesomely pleasantly surprised because the movie's great. Um, so the, the synopsis is, you know, much like Night of the Creeps and some of these other alien movies, something crash lands on Earth, these little slug... Le- By the way, folks, spoiler alert. I haven't seen the movie. Spoiler alert. Watch it. Then come back and watch this because we're going to give everything too, away. subscribe when you come back. Is yeah, please awesome? do. Yeah, hit subscribe, hit like, give us a comment. Please, we like to respond. We like we to love interact the comments. with all love the, the comments. So uh, anyway, so these little slug guys come out and uh, this thing's got a great cast. It's got Michael Rooker. It's got Elizabeth Banks. It's got Greg Henry. It's got Nathan Fillon, a host of other people. Um, I think, is, it, is, it, is Lucas Haas in this one? I can't remember. Mm, I don't remember. I don't know. I, I think he might be. I don't know. Either way, it's got a great cast and directed by James Gunn prior to his Guardians of the Galaxy fame. Mammoth of right? fame, right? Yeah. Right. So so, uh, so Michael Rooker's out there and he comes upon one of these slugs, right? He's out there. I don't know if he's hunting. I can't remember. I think he's out there hunting. And he gets infected and he becomes the host body for this alien thing right sort of a, it's kind of a hive mind thing right where they're all sort of doing the same thing at the same time yeah i, I, I think they all kind of kind of act on the same brain the same way right yeah they show he's sort of the hub his, of it and, and they show scenes throughout the movie where you can kind of see into his head right where right exactly planets and done all that right crap, so. yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah anybody that like comes into contact with him or like he he's got that thing where they you know the tentacle comes out of him and he starts yeah. sucking the life out of him they see what he sees the other planets and stuff like that's pretty cool and uh but he's got this insatiable craving for meat which <laughs> is a really cool segue because uh well i don't call it a segue but it's a really cool uh thing that goes on because it happens to be the be- beginning of deer season in the movie and in this particular town in georgia Deer, the opening of deer South season. South Carolina. Is it, is, was it, it South, South Carolina? Carolina? I, I yeah. stand I stand corrected. South Carolina, yeah. another great state. Uh, it's the beginning of deer season, and in this particular town, it's a big deal, and they have a big party and all that. So all this is going on while this giant opening of deer season celebration is happening. And there's a lot of side, there's a lot of good side stuff going on, like uh, Elizabeth Banks and, and um, Michael Rooker are married, but they're estranged. You know, and uh, Nathan. Which, by Fillin the way, really Elizabeth interesting Banks, really. relationship. They obviously make you think that Michael Rooker has a lot of money, right? Because Elizabeth Banks is yeah, super right. He's he like a big not. wig in the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, he's he's like kind of a big wig in the town, the money guy. You know, and it's kind of interesting because when you look at Michael Rooker, you don't think, oh, there's a guy with a lot of money. You know, you're like, there's a guy that probably's going to hit me with a tire iron. <laughs> 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 He usually plays that but, character. He, he right, really exactly, plays right, exactly. the wealthy industrialist. Exactly. You know? Right, exactly. Right, exactly. He plays the wealthy He's not exactly Jim Backus from uh, <laughs> um, Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island. Yeah, Mr. Mm, Howell. Love yeah. it. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah, mm. Anyway. <laughs> so, 
Sorry. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> you're killing me way out there. Well, so on, anyway. while we're talking about characters, we need to get to the mayor of the town. I think it's Wheelsby, yeah. South Carolina, who's played tremendously uh, by Greg Henry. And Greg in the Henry. film, his name is Jack McCready. And they merged Jack uh, Burton and R.J. McCready. Right. That is his name. So, two of our You favorites. know, and I... And Greg Henry, like, he sort of... <laughs> I first got a, a load of Greg Henry in the movie Payback with Mel yes. Gibson. Yes. And he plays a... He plays the character in Payback sort of similar to the way he plays the character, even though he's a villain in Payback. Right. He's not really a villain in Slither. But he's got sort of that same fast talking smart assy politician kind you, of you hit the nail on the head smarmy is the exact word that is the word that he played he plays right. both those characters and i love it smarmy. at the beginning where he's driving he's driving and he's like swearing up a storm in his car and he passes the with a little kid and he's like don't forget to vote or what <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he, the guy has the best lines of the whole movie and oh the, my he god steals, he steals a film in every scene he's in without a yeah doubt. He, he's great <laughs> And a Chicago guy. The, so. Right. And my, you know, I think this is your favorite line in the movie. And it's one of mine, too, is where he says, well, you know, if you're from certain parts of the South, all soft drinks are called Coke. Right. They call everything Coke. It's, that's just a part of their, it's a, what do they call it? A colloquialism. Or well, what they would I consider that, cola I just, would, or, or I think soda. I just sprained my tongue saying yeah, that. Yeah, don't, don't try to Anyway, that, so there's that thing where he's he goes, you know, Dr. Pepper is the only Coke I drink. It's, but it, it's the way he delivers the line. Like, it's this desperation, you know, and this, it's the, you know, like somebody just no, took his firstborn uh, child away. He's so great. He's in, in every single scene he does, he just tears it up, man. And you want to, and, and it's one of the things that makes this movie so great is it, it's got some tension. It's got your sci fi thing, you know, it's got all that stuff, but it's got some just hilarious comedy moments that aren't. You know, they're not done like, but up, uh, you know what I mean? Comedy. No, they're, no, they're, they're conversational, like natural, right. sort of it's organic. Just, it's just humor part moments. of what is happening, right? It's the yeah, organic, there's like no said, the organic moments. And, no. The there's way so Gunn directs it. Yeah, the way Gunn directs it, it's really good, too. It's genius, dude. And it's funny because he doesn't do those same things when you watch Guardians. You know, there, there, he doesn't have like a tense moments. I think you were saying that he's really lighthearted with it, usually. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing about Guardians is like, you know, I know guys who are in their sixties that just want to see Guardians because it's got a cool soundtrack that everybody remembers. You know, and that's kind of become and, and you know, he really plays that here. AM AM radio, one hundred percent yacht man. rock. Yeah. yeah, for sure. No the love yacht, yacht rock. Yacht, yacht well, rock. Randy me, Couture. Oh, Besides you, oh, Randy Couture loves yacht rock. He he, he probably writes chess or uh, writes poetry and stuff like that too. He does he write makes, poetry. He's a smart Randy guy, man. Is a, yeah, you wouldn't. You, yeah, Randy's a very cultured guy, but we digress. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so Back anyway, to Slither. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so my question is: so obviously everybody knows Nathan Fillon from Firefly, right? That was like the superstar thing that. Right. And now the today. rookies had that show on for a while exactly. Too, right? But so I assume that Firefly was before this film, though, right? Yes. It was okay because because I, I mean so. obviously this is a great piece of casting because so many sci-fi people knew him from. From Firefly, which I think right. you know, tons of actors came out of. Yeah, he was sort of um, underground, kind of at the yeah. time, you know. But he uh, yeah. puts and on a Adam genius. Adam Baldwin was in it, and he's you know, a he's genius great. in this in this movie, man. Nathan oh, Fillion, because the way His he comic plays timing everything is amazing. Oh, it's ideal, and he's got just enough of a southern accent to make the stuff funny, and his expressions are oh. absolutely classic throughout Between the film. Between him and, and he, Greg Henry, the back and yeah. forth with those two. <laughs> It's so, I'm gonna th so great. Do you think a lot of this was improv? Because it's a lot. Well, not a lot of it, but it seems to me like some of it was like improvised. I mean, I think with those two guys, probably yeah. Because I mean, you know, they're they're both very very good, and I would say very underrated actors for yeah, what 100%. they do. Um, you know, uh, I got both of them are stuff. way underrated, man. Like when yeah. I, I, there are so many. Especially Greg Henry. I think Greg Henry doesn't get enough good roles. Of course, now he's he's getting older now. But even in the the guy's just a versatile actor. He can just about yeah. play anything. And, and and same with Michael Rooker. Same with Nathan Fillon. These guys are like they could play anything. They just have yeah, that. But, but I think the cool to, thing, like we were saying, is that they they tend to play their roles exactly the same. 
Yeah. They just have the ability to get it over, you know, as right. as either comedy or drama or whatever the case may be. If they're a villain or yeah. a good guy they're, or whatever. They're, yeah. They're it's, even it's, it's a talent, across, man. Across the board. It's uh, definitely a so, talent. So after, so after Rooker gets uh, infected, then for whatever reason, his wife, I don't know if she wants to try and put it back together with him or whatever, but it's, it's a really interesting subplot that's going on because they're obviously, they're having problems and uh, there's that. And she's obviously where, into Nathan Fillon too. You she's know, very, she's right, they're old sweethearts right. and whatever, but she's still for the sake of marriage, trying to right. put it back together with him. Even after she finds out later on that he's a monster, which right by the way, one of the greatest scenes of the film is when he's got that look in his eye. He's in yeah. love, but he's completely converted. You know, he's got the yeah, sideways he's mouth to and, it's weird, you know. Weird uh, snaggle tooth. It's, and it's so funny. It's so it classic. is funny. And then, he, so he, and then he gets that chick that lives in the trailer park. I don't know if she's a waitress at the bar or something, but he gets her and he infects her, and then he keeps her in this barn, and she's like, I don't know if she he impregnates her with all those little slugs, if that's the deal, because I think... You know, she just keeps eating and eating. And doesn't she, at some point, all these slugs come out of her, I think. Well, she, she w- finally winds she up blowing up. up. They're yeah. in there, and they can see her, you know. Yeah, and all those little she's slugs still come out. begging for food. <laughs> and another thing I, I like about this film is it doesn't uh, it doesn't pull any punches either. Like, they kill off just about everybody yeah. in the movie, including Greg Henry. Like, the only people that survive, I think, are... The, there's uh, Elizabeth there's Banks. a young girl who through. survives. The daughter, right, and she's part you know. of that family that's right. trapped in the house, which is probably my favorite part in the movie because the way Gunn uh, constructed great the scene. scene. Oh, man, it's it's like so much tension. And look, we've all seen this, uh, this scene a million times before. A girl sitting in a bathtub, monster gets in the bathtub or whatever. We've seen it, right? But the way he does it, work it, it works so yeah. well and then she looks it's out the classic. window and it's like they're covered with these slug things it's really cool well i think cool. that i think that's one of the things that makes the um the soundtrack so cool that he does too is it's not just the songs that are in them it's the placement of the song yeah they don't they the just film. they don't fit but they do right you know <laughs> exactly they're, they're exactly absolutely right. out of place but, but absolutely in place at the same time yeah, it's a really totally it's a really weird thing and <clears throat> it's hard to do and he made it merges it Perfectly. And speaking of uh, soundtracks, that brings us to this week's viewer email. Yeah, this one comes to us. We love viewer emails, by the way. Keep them coming; they're we hard do. to pick. Uh, this one comes to us from Ian from St. Louis, Missouri. Ah, the arches. Don't ah, like Cardinals, but everything other than that, St. Louis isn't too bad. Great pizza, ah, ribs. by the way. Ribs. Ribs are great too. Yes, and uh, what's that other stuff? Frozen custard that they have. You know that it's like yeah, kind of ice so. creamy. It's good, man. Good stuff. Yeah. How about anyway. loose, loose meat sandwiches? I thought that was Iowa. Oh yeah, you know? you're right. It is Iowa. Yeah. No, you're right. We've been, Ready? We've been around the world it, too many times. Was it Made Right? Is that who does it? Made Right. Made right? Yeah, absolutely. yeah. So we gotta open up a Made Right. Why? I think they all closed. Yeah, but we could make it work. Did you know that um, cashew chicken was invented in Springfield, Missouri? I'll yes, I did. Later day. You told me that, but it is Ian true. Writes to Folks, more, week. more, 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 uh, more dissertations about cashew yes. chicken and your other favorite the, Chinese food dishes. From the Mansons. Yes, exactly. Uh, Ian writes to us this week. Hey guys, I know you guys are really into metal um, and lots of other rock and roll type of bands. ACDC, Led Zeppelin, you got the shirt on, Motorhead, everybody like that. But since this film is so heavy on what we would call yacht rock or easy listening. What are your favorite Yacht Rock style songs? Oh, wow. I'm going to let you start that one off, bro. Uh, I'm going to go with Brandy or a Fine Girl from Looking Glass. Mm. And, and That's a classic. Come a Little Bit Closer by Jay and the American. Oh, wow. Dude, you're pulling that one out of left field, man. I like yeah. it. So I was going to say... Um, couldn't get it right by the Climax Blues Band. Oh but I man, don't really consider cool. that to be like a true yacht rock, easy listening song. No, but they always put it on with the yacht rock, so I think you're on there, and that's Absolutely. a great song. I love. So that I'm gonna song. go. Uh, I'm gonna go with these two: uh, Lido Shuffle by Boz Skaggs. Oh man, number one, and then the ultimate is How Long by Ace. You've never oh heard that man, one. That's great one. How long? Man, with, with you a, must uh, really... that's with another a, with song. Honorable mention to Smoke. 
from a distant fire by the Sanford Townsend Band. Look well, that now one. you've come. You're making that one up. No, I'm not. That's legit. I'm gonna have to. One look of the that only up. bands that ever had a lead a lead singer that played the keyboards. Like no one did that. You know, nor should they ever try it again. But anyway, no. Ian, thanks for the email this week. Keep those emails coming. We love Wait a minute, didn't Phil Negron from Three Dog Night play? The- oh, no, no, he didn't. He no, just I sang. think it was Uriah Heep you're thinking of. I think, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, Uriah yeah. Heep. Yeah, that's right. I think he played the, the keyboards, and, and, and look what happened with them. Yeah. Bugger off. Right. So there you go. That's this week's email. Let's get back to Slither. So, <laughs> so I really love, we, we mentioned this earlier, that it's set around deer hunting season and it's this big giant holiday in their town, which is, it's, it's a really cool setting for it because it, it segues into man is eating meat and then these aliens have to eat meat, <laughs> including man, right? So they'll get yes. anybody. And the kills in this thing are great. And I think you, uh, you pointed the one out to me where the guy gets split. Oh, that's my favorite one where they're, they're tracking the, they, he's like an octopus guy. Yeah. And uh, he, he hasn't fully, you know, morphed into whatever his final, you know, embodiment is going to be the thing. And I, I don't remember who has the standoff with him, though. I don't remember just who this, does either, but all I remember is like, this is going to, the guy's all tough and stuff. And right. then all of a sudden, there's a wide like, shot, and then you see <laughs> like that. And yeah. it's just, mm. <laughs> that's so see, good. that's one of those great comic. Moments that's really not intended to be funny, no, but it is. No, but it's hundred percent right. funny. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, as we said, so then Michael Rooker keeps getting larger and larger and larger and larger until finally he makes a nest in their house. Yeah. Right in their house. He's kind of. He's kind of. He, he's got the tentacles he's absorbed, to go out. Right, and so all these zombies that they've created with these other slugs are coming and sort of he becomes sort of like the blob from the old Steve McQueen movie. Yep. where he's absorbing all these other people inside of him and getting bigger and bigger. So for whatever reason, and I can't remember, Elizabeth Banks decides that she's she's going to try and get back together with him while he's a monster, yeah. right? But Nathan Fillin, smart as he is, figures out that if he pumps him, <laughs> if he pump, his name is Grant. If he pumps yeah, Grant, Grant full of gas, if he pumps Grant full of gas, he could blow him up. And he... And of course he does. And it's a, it's a really fun scene. And uh, what's a cool scene about it is, you know, what's going to happen. Like they don't, right. You know, yeah. pull, pull punches about, you know, what's going to happen, but gun still films it in a way where it puts you on the edge of your seat to whether yep. it's going to work or not. Right. And, and then of course, and the end, Nathan Fillon kind of has to take one of the, one of the things in order to, Connected, right, right? Exactly, right. He, t- so he, he, gets takes the, a, he gets the vision and the whole thing. Right, he gets the vision, yeah. right. So he's infected. And then, of course, at the end, you know, they wind up figuring out a way for him to survive. And Elizabeth Banks well, to survive. When, when Michael Rooker dies, all the slithery things die. That's because right. they're all interconnected. And so then everybody's fine. Right, it comes right? out of them. And there's this big, there's that big scene where it's like oozing pus yeah. and everything. Well, until, until, until the end with then... the cat, which is very, you know, we, we've talked about the, the commonality oh, with yeah. the creeps. Yeah. You know, very similar in that. You Folks, know, you should watch. You want to you have a good double feature night. Watch United the Creeps and then watch Slither. That's a good, really good double yeah. feature. Super that would be double, a great double feature. Did we mention um, the Air Supply song? I don't think we did, but it's definitely the best song of the, you know, uh, making love so out of nothing at all, right? Out and of it's place. so well put. Oh, my God. It's so out of place, of but such. <laughs> works so damn well well just, it's, it's because it's because they it keep showing genius. that back and forth shot with with michael rooker where he's you know he's got like a the mouth thing yeah, big horns coming out of him but but he sheds a tear yeah that's uh, so classic that's really I funny it. folks i want to know if you folks have seen this movie i would like to know if you think it's an underrated classic like we think yeah. it's an underrated yeah i'd love because we do think it's too. an underrated classic absolutely yeah. so, so hit subscribe hit like leave us a comment we love talking to people go to the give website us some, give us some suggestions of movies you'd like to see us talk about too yep we've we'll got do a few it. that are upcoming we yeah we'll do them we don't give a shit we don't we're not care. bashful tell them how we pay no. the bills we pay the bills if our website's working by going to mansonbrothers.com we got all kinds of merchandise including these pictures of me and my brother we'll sign them for you you can get uh DVDs and Blu-rays, and we'll sign those. You can also get those off Amazon.com. 
Uh, our first movie, The Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre, is also available streaming on iTunes, Amazon Prime, uh, and video on demand everywhere. Everywhere. You might have a sequel coming. And it'll only cost you a couple bucks, so give it a whirl. Yeah, it'll only like cost it. you a few bucks. One more Closing fun notes for the week. My attorney's on the line. I got to go and uh, something about not having sharp objects in the same room. Um, so I got to run here pretty quick. Let's tell the people one last thing on Slither. Your favorite part. My favorite part of Slither is where they're trapped in the house. Bar none. Okay. It's a great Mine's great Greg scene. Henry. Greg Henry. Bar yeah, none. anything, any scene with any Greg, scene Henry, with Greg Henry, Henry in this movie is great. Watch it, folks. Hit like. That's all for this we'll week. We'll see you later, shitty pants. Thank you.